Alright folks, that took a few seconds longer than expected, so I went to the bathroom because the players had to go BRB, so I figured I'd, I'd double down on the time and we'd waste less of it. So we are ready to go. It's game number one in the other semifinals. Solar versus Jokshi kicking off here for the Make Korea Great Again. It is the last Make Korea Great Again, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Again, in the Grand Finals, aka the match after this, you will find out what I mean by that. <coughs> Excuse me. But as we get into it, spawning here in the top left side of the map, he is going to be Splice's own Blue Zerg Solar. And his opponent spawning opposite and top right, we got very, very much so the Red Terran Jokshi. It's kind of cool. I got like the X S, uh, the X GSL champion versus the X SSL champion. It's always nice to see. Uh, the winner of this will go on to fight against Biol in those grand finals, and that's where I'm really truly interested to see what that matchup ends up being. If it's ZVZ, it's going to be tight. I think if it's ZVT, then we'll find out from this game whether Josh has got his, uh, his chops in the matchup. Either way, again, first map is pre-picked, and then it is loser's pick after that, so Jokshi or Solar may end up having a map advantage, all things considered. Now... As we get into this, this map is not exactly the best for Reapers, so I'm not at all surprised to see Jokshi not go for three racks Reaper, but we have been seeing him play a little bit of that in the cups we've been casting in the qualifiers more recently. That being said though, the question really gets asked because this is this seems to be like a wave hitting Terrans all slowly and surely. It's like, will Jokshi play mech? And I don't mean like, oh, you're gonna turtle up, go for four bases, battle cruisers type of mech, but I mean like even just doing the factory into the cyclones. I mean, this isn't the double factory build by any means, but in this series, I'm asking, because we, we've seen some people try it, then Innovation started doing it, then Beyond tried to do it and lost to like that random Croatian dude in Nation Wars. What was up with that, by the way? But uh, I think standard bio is still like the comfort zone of a lot of these guys. It still works, it still plays nowadays. It's been what they've been playing for years, so. Uh, seeing an old school dude like Jokshi, I really expect him to play that more expected style. For Solar though, that's where things get a little bit interesting, right? We've seen all ins, we've seen Roaches, we've seen Ravagers, we've seen Lings, we've seen Banlings, we've seen Mutas. I think this map is an absolutely fantastic map if you want to play that Muta style on. Uh, Hydras were kind of dominating the matchup across the board when they had 7 range, but brought back down to 6. Even that's kind of fallen out of ZVT. Maybe we're getting a little bit annoying here in the natural base. Yeah, people uh, did not award bets from that last series, so one sec. Gotta fix that. Mods, 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 please. <laughs> I think I spelled Solar's name wrong on the bets, but I had to uh, <laughs> I had to do it quick. Because again, solo casting, I don't really have anyone to cover my butt. Uh, Overlord get caught, gets caught in the middle of the map. Someone did some bits too, I'll check on that in a second. Thank you whoever that was, I heard the noise. Uh, Overlord gets caught early on out of Solar. This actually really sucks. That's not only going to supply block him, but it's going to supply block him at a pretty important time where, as we can see, he's still supply blocked as he moves towards that third. Uh, not exactly going to be in such a terrible spot, but uh, let's see who was that. Nogi! Nogi109, thank you for the 200-bit cheer. Super appreciated. And, uh, of course, I hope Terminator's still awake and enjoying the games. Because he gets to watch them live for once. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to move my chair out of the way because I think I'm going to stand to cast for the rest of this. Feeling a little bit antsy and full of energy now, guys. What the hell happened to 6k viewers? We were so close. I know, we're still kind of close, but again, that's the thing about the front page of Twitch, guys. It's going to fluctuate a lot. Again, big shout out to the folks at Twitch for putting us on the front page. It is super mucho appreciated. And hopefully those who are coming here for the first time are enjoying the StarCraft that they're getting to see. But uh, normally I work with a partner. Tonight was a bit of a solo situation, so uh, come back and see what the real show's like, I guess. <laughs> Another time. Stim finishing up here shortly for Jokshi. He didn't really do anything too crazy. You know, it's the two medevac, marine drops. It's it's so standard as far as builds go that it's just hardly worth talking about. So uh, as he picks up to go, we'll see if he gets damage done. 
A lot of the times, this kind of gets relegated to just cleaning up creep because the queens are on the ball and looks like Solar does have those on the front lines ready to poke back. Not that many transfuses though, and if Jokshi identifies this, he may stim on top of the one queen that has energy. Speaking of that stim, he goes on in looking for some, some fights. He's gonna find some, one of the queens goes down pretty quick. Nice pick off over there. Transfused those into the other low queen though, and the Lings of course get that surrounding that Josh is gonna have to pick up and try and get out of there, but almost loses a medevac in the process! Nice focus fire out of Solar, gotta say. Not exactly the easiest thing to do in the heat of battle. Uh, meanwhile, Overlord does get a pretty nice scout in the main. Gets picked off, he sees no tech lab on that factory, so he knows there's not gonna be siege tanks to worry about. Uh, Bailey Ness comes down, and of course, 1-1 one, one behind this. Jokshi's on his way to Combat Shield, his zone upgrade, but more importantly, a third base that did get scouted, or didn't get scouted, actually. Did that get down beforehand? So, no, Solar doesn't know about the third base just yet, so... Uh, I think you're still, at this point, weighing your options. Terran really could two-base you, so you gotta be a little bit careful. Medivacs to the south, we got that Liberator wrapping around up here. There is this kind of like really stupid hard to hit spot right here around the third. You don't even need Liberator range for it if you do it right. And as we see, Joshi tries to get in there. The Queens do still find the range to hit them. So we're gonna back away and try and reposition, I guess, for a little bit later. Drops go off in the main while this happens, but they're immediately responded to. Solar's also got a really nicely positioned Spore Crawler. Gonna catch any of those Medivacs that come in every single time. So Jokshi is deflected in three different locations and Solar's defense is so solid for the start of this game. And that being said, my question goes, does Jokshi try and take that gold? Does he feel behind and rushed and needed to do it? Or does he just take the regular base down here to the south? Either way, Habitation Station can certainly be annoying to defend in multiple locations against a player like Solar who's got a lot of creep spread going for him. Not sure what the reference is to in chat, but I see some Nightman coming out of Land Cow. Shoutouts for the uh, <laughs> Always Sunny reference. That's that's one of my weak spots, guys. You make Always Sunny references in chat, my eyes are going to see him, even if I'm not looking at Twitch chat. Looks like John's actually going to just uh, turn around with most of his forces. Again, just seeing what Solar has to offer, it's really hard to drop him. Defense has been pretty solid so far. These two drops in the south might just get a chance to distract. Oh, this is why they're running off. Creep spread on the uh, gold base, and he is going to take that gold base too. Uh, I'm a little bit jaded on this. I think the gold base could actually be a huge detriment. I think that Joshi does not have enough yet to really take control of this. Long distance mining is a little bit awkward too, but distracts in the south, so we're not going to have any Ling run bys just yet. He's going to try and stop these Marines from killing his fourth. Unfortunately, still has to cancel nonetheless. Um... But yeah, this gold base, the reason I think it's a lot of problems is unlike other maps like Echo, where all three of the bases funnel to one spot, this kind of funnels to like three and four different attack paths, all consolidating towards the natural. It's it's a little bit more difficult to lock down is all. But once you do, once siege tanks are set up, hell, even a bunker or two goes down, that's not a problem. Let's not forget, Muta is going to be coming out of Solar 2. As predicted, this is a great map for air, for Zerg. So if he's going to be wrapping around the north side, that gold base is, again, going to be a, perhaps a little bit at risk. But Doom Drop styles, five medevacs, mostly loaded, not fully loaded, heading towards the main base. Uh, the Muta's coming out now, but there's no Ling's already ready to catch this, so this is going to be a lot of Widow Mines coming down, a lot of Marines coming down, Stim pops off too, Queen's going to die, anything that comes up that ramp's going to get caught by these Widow Mines, got to look out for that friendly fire, but we'll see if it's good or bad, Widow Mines actually don't go off of much of anything, really, this ends up being really awkward, I thought Joshua was going to absolutely dominate with that attack, but falling back now to not get killed by the Mutas, Ling's running on in, and yeah, leaves a couple of Marines up behind to distract, I guess uh, wants to pull back to the backside. While this goes on, I guess the drop did hit the third, and that got some kills, but the Widow Mines mostly got them. The Marines didn't contribute too much. Is there detection, though? Does he know it was Widow Mines? If he was looking over here at Jokshi's army, he may have thought that that was just simply Marines. Thank you, whoever the donation was. We'll get to that in a second, but oh, these Widow Mines! The Overseer should finish up, actually. Excuse me. My excitement was pre preempted by uh, hype. Although, they're still kind of coming off cooldown here in a second. Nah, they both get picked up. Okay. That got a little bit spooky, though. Great spread, still good to the south. And who was that? Corbin J donated $5. His front page hype. Are we still on the front page? That'd be fantastic. Um, thank you guys again for watching.
Uh, this medevac is going to get caught, but it's also going to see the lings, which is equally important. Top side, there's a couple of turrets. To say the least, these mutas will not have an easy time picking off SCVs. Uh, the repair does go into one of the turrets, and it's going to go down, but he will pick off one of the mutas for it. Not a bad trade. Links to the south are not too much of a problem. Marines need to get their butts up here, though, because those depots are all vulnerable. While the SCVs might be protected, you still don't want to get supply block like this, and Jokshi sitting on a pretty nasty supply block as we speak. Uh, command starting to get stalled out too. I think he's relying on that to unsupply block him. Base down here, the south does get killed, not canceled by the looks of things. And Solar, he's doing a great job policing this. Jokshi is pulling little bits ahead, though these traits are finally starting to go a little bit in his favor. As we see, resources lost starting to look a little bit better for the Terran. But for the most part, still not on his fourth base. Solar has been mining off of four. If we go to the income graph, I'm sure it's going to be painted blue for the most part. Yeah. Couple of, couple of dips where I guess those attacks went off earlier, but for the most part, um, you know, surprisingly even on army supply, army size. Oh, that SCV pull was bad. Uh, we'll get some Liberators in here, get some splash damage to chase that off. But again, as we see, without that bonus damage versus light, Liberators just do not do much to Mutas anymore. It's so depressing. It's so sad. And the Carapace, of course, helps with that a lot too, but uh, armor upgrades work double against units that attack twice. So I think it's definitely worth the investment. Uh, if the Liberators are going to be used for anything else, I mean, cool, you catch some Banelings, maybe a couple Lings, but there's no Ultras or anything out just yet, so these are not super important to keep in anti-ground mode. Uh, create some zones, I guess, to fight in. Mutas go back in for round two. More turrets for Mei. Jokshi not pulling to repair, though. This might finally kill the gold base. A lot of SCVs go down. Meanwhile, towards the south, looks like those Widow Mines have just taken out a majority of Solar's army. They're all on cooldown, but more Banelings roll on in. Jokshi, of course, has some Marines, but he might be putting these in the medevac suit. The Bailings are coming in. The splits are good, and this not looking so good for Jokshi, all things considered. It's going to be a small handful of Marines that live. Liberty's get some shots off, but Jokshi's army on the ground got run right through. Reinforcements do come in, though, and he's still got upgrades working well for him. 3-2 to be precise. But no matter how many times he attacks down here to the south, there's still always creep spread waiting for him. There's always another base going up somewhere. Gold base gets taken out of solar while this goes on. Widow Mines want to go off on the mutas. They have to instead go off on the lings. Not really that much anti-air left as the medevacs are in full retreat. And that liberator is going to get picked off. Well, the barracks being out in the open looks a little bit awkward, but it's kind of one of those things where if this gets compromised, Josh, he's probably so far behind he's out of the game anyhow. His supply count's still dragging behind a bit, but that's mostly because of the SCVs. His army still looks pretty nice. Yeah, he does look to come back in for round two. I didn't realize there's two fully loaded bunkers as well. Josh, he's just kind of giving up on the base. Bring the, bring the Marines out of that bunker and take them on that front line, man. He's making a bit of a Hail Mary pass. He's just diving on in. Not gonna cut it though. Bane Lings take out most of the Widow Mines. Lings take out the rest of the Marines. Jokshi falls back once again, and a lot of his supply is uh, coming across the map, but I'm worried that this might be a little too far gone. Solar is gonna be fighting off of Creep though. This is how a Zerk player can throw a game to be certain, but I think uh, even if these Widow Mines get fantastic hits, the Mutas are still gonna run rampant. That's gonna be game. Solar's gonna be on top of the production now. Jokshi's in a lot of trouble. I, uh, I don't think he can do too much about this. I mean, he does have two bases, I guess. We'll put this with an asterisk. They're both, one's a planetary, the other's his main floated over. The gold base going down is going to really suck. Those bunkers are still up from earlier, so they're going to help out a little bit, but twice the army supply. GG's finally get called, and Solar is going to take game number one. Very nicely done. And we broke 6,000 viewers, apparently. That's going to be, uh, I think, the, the weekly record high. Even if it's only going to be for a moment. That's pretty cool. Thank you guys so much for joining us again on the stream. But uh, going to find out what Solar's, or excuse me, Jackshi's map is here in a moment. Solar needs a quick BRB. So I'm also going to BRB. Take us to a commercial break. See you guys in two minutes. Hopefully the game will be up and ready to go by the time we're back. <laughs> I can't turn the music off yet. Wait for it. All right. <laughs> okay. I have no idea what song that was. I was just kind of rolling with it. We're going to load in the game directly. It's map number two. If you guys are just joining us for whatever reason, it is the semifinals 
of Make Korea Great Again. Biel already played his semifinals match and awaits in the finals for the winner of this. And it is currently 1-0 to zero for this guy spawning on the top left side of the map. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be Splice's Solar. And the bottom right, we got the Red Terran. Got to give it up for Jokshi. Now, Jokshi needs your prayers, your energy, your mojo, whatever it is you believe in. He's down a game, and it looked pretty rough for him at that. Now, before I get too much into it, it's fair to say a lot of that may have had to do with the fact that it was Habitation Station. That it may have been more map dependent than Jokshi dependent. But Solar's a pretty fantastic player, and it's really hard to say anything other than just simply that. Uh, of course, he won SSL a lot more recently than Jokshi won GSL, so just in terms of championships, already got him beat over there. Up one game in the series, looks pretty good, but I am cheering for Jokshi. Solar uh, BM'd me in the lobby, and now he is forever on my hate list. I let him know that. He called me out on my BM, and I gave him a poop emoticon. So, Solar, please, do us a favor and lose. <laughs> If not for a game three, at least for a no ZVZ finals, am I right? No, nah, I think Buell and Solar will make for a great matchup if that ends up being the case. Oh, wow. Bets, by the way, are pretty one-sided. For the, uh, I don't know what he's asking here. I was going to say, uh, Solar's got about 15,000 per two, so bet on him. The Jocks, you having about 3,000... 950 on him. Oops, sorry. Ignore. Ah, I did that in all check because I forgot I'm a referee. I'm never usually a referee, guys. That's why I don't want to have referee. I can't handle the responsibility of all chat. Um, how do I get to observer chat? Are you serious? I gotta go through a hundred names to get here? Uh, I'll tell you in finals in chat when I announce to stream. Then you can tell your stream in Korean. Because I don't want to give away anything too early. It's after this best of three concludes. I tell you guys what was going on for 2017. But, uh, where was I? Right, we're casting a game. I have hit loopy periods, guys. I got about two hours of sleep before this. I know it's not an excuse, but it is the reason I'm starting to lose my attention span. Ling's actually managed to slip by in the middle of the map pretty quickly. This was nice because it dodged past that Reaper. It doesn't get to kill the SCV, but it does delay the command center building by a pretty substantial amount of time. Welcome back, Rifkin Urkel. Look, Urkel wore suspenders because he knew it was cool too, all right? Suspenders are cool. Uh, three bases set up for solar. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even say that with a straight face. Yo, I just like suspenders, guys. They're better than belts. Although I do have like one of the best belts in the world. Suspenders are pretty legit. And uh, they're comfy. And don't worry. One day I'm going to be like super swole and then it won't matter what I'm wearing. I can wear a garbage bag and I'll look good in it, okay? Just you guys wait and see. <laughs> Who am I kidding, right? Uh, Reaper just kind of on patrol right now. I think he wants to go back in and check for information. He doesn't want to scrap this out too much. He'll... Uh, Poke the queen. Uh, poke the bear, if you will. JD Toss, thank you for the 23 months of resub. And Ace is life. Dude, I'm glad you're on board. I'm glad you're back. But I will make it clear that uh, nobody, nobody's really heard about what the plans are for 2017 except for myself and Zombie Group. So you guys will all be hearing it for the first time. Because uh, these plans did not get finalized until very recently. <laughs> so I'm excited to uh, talk about that a little bit later. But uh, keep teasing. I gotta stop. Rifkin, you dirty tease. Just say it when you gotta say it. Uh, Hellions coming out of this are actually a little bit delayed and surprising out of Jokshi, but does that mean he's gonna throw down an armory? There's been a couple of different versions of this where he's been dropping Hellions, but with so many Marines being made and only one medevac, like I can't imagine this is like for Marine drops. He's a little bit supply block too. Awkward, don't look at that guy's pro gamer status. And there's the armory coming down. So he's gonna go for this big push, kinda hit him with a an all in bit of strength behind this but it's something that I think I really truly think solar should be able to hold I mean normally you want to have roaches for it but he's gonna have enough Queens out a little bit of splits how many Queens would be about seven six or seven Queens in total I don't think it'd be too bad at all uh, the Hellings will run across the map afterwards second round of Marines kind of just gonna wait for that medevac I guess and I mean truth be told two full medevacs 
four to six Hellions is going to turn into Hellbats. That's a lot of damage. But I think uh, I think Solar should be okay. Actually, if he drops a bunch of Creep Tumors right now, he will definitely not be okay, though, because he's barely got Transfuse Energy on some of these Queens. Very, very barely. If he drops a Creep Tumor, that basically is the life of a Queen going down. So, yeah, that's going to suck, actually, right there. That's a nice pick-off out of Jokshi. Unintentional, but it's going to work out nice. As he pokes forward, though, Hellbats on that front line are a bit of a surprise. We've got Banelings coming in, too. If those finish up, this should be a piece of cake. Uh, reinforcements on the way, though. This is pretty dedicated out of Josh, you guys. He wants to make the game end right here, and it's either going to be for him or against him. We'll find out in a second. The firing squad's lined up. Marines pull back. They actually focus fire down the Banelings, but the Zerglings get to surround the Hellbats. With the Hellbats being gone, this is a lot harder to fight with. Medivac gets picked off, too, and Jokshi once got a couple Hellions reinforcing on the front line. That's looking a little bit help hopeful. It's not exactly the Riders of Rohan coming to his rescue, because back at home, Solar's still sitting on them Queens, boys. He's got Lings. He's got Banelings. He's looking so good. He's got plus one armor on top of all this. And Jokshi, I mean, waiting was the wrong answer if he was going to. But if he had, he would have had combat shields at least. And maybe that could have looked different. His attempt to take a third base behind. This was caught by Solar. The Link almost kills the SCV. That would have been so frustrating. So tilting. But, uh, his attack was, again, very dedicated. The SCV count is low. The third CC is still not up. He's doing some nice pickup micro, and I like what Joxy's doing to try and make this work. Those Marines are not that plentiful, though, and I think Solar's going to just ram a couple of Banelings into the heart of them. But focus fires on. On point. He's uh, continuing to push up that ramp. So right there, the sub caught me a little bit off guard there. Picks off one of the Queens. Second Queen going to go down in a second. He's focusing on the wrong Queen, but he still gets three of the Queens almost. Solar's struggling. He's starting to put these units in one or two at a time. He needs to collect his forces. If he keeps sending the Lings in two at a time, they're going to keep getting picked off, but... Jokshi ends up taking a pretty nice trade there at the very end. Was that going to be enough? Thank you very much to McCavity177, Twitch Prime sub. Hi! Of course, if you guys are uh, using Twitch Prime, I want to remind you all, it's coming around that time where your Twitch Prime is probably expired as far as the subs go. Even though you keep having Twitch Prime full-time, you have to manually reapply your subs every month. They will expire after like 33 days or something like that. So no auto renew for Twitch Prime, but you can keep coming back to the same streamer. And I hope you guys would consider coming back to Base Trade TV. But, uh, down here to the left side. Solar is going to get away with a fourth, and this this game continues to just look better and better for him. He's sitting on like 70 drones. His melee upgrades are finishing up in a moment here. Bailing speed is going to make engagements just so much better for him. Uh, the Spire is going to finish up in the second, too. I don't know how big of a deal Mutas are really going to be, though. I kind of feel like Solar at this point could just run away with ground and win the game. But, of course, we can see that. It's a little bit more obvious over here. Solar might be thinking about, like, ah, Jack should probably recover. And I saw the third base. I didn't stop it. There's a lot of reasons for him to be playing safe. But Banley Speed's also going to give a little bit of extra health. Banley's about to pop up to uh, bloop, plus five. This is where the meters are kind of important. Not so much in terms of damage or engagements, but it is what keeps the medevacs from getting away for free every single time. Uh, I will say, though, the income graph, I haven't pressed it. I'm scared to press it. It's going to be painted blue. Yep. 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 Looking very good for Solar. 1-1 uh, one, one will finish up for Jokshi, though, so he won't be behind in upgrades, which would be nice. That was actually a really big concern. If Solar had started his 2-2, if Jokshi had been really late because he was focused on all these attacks and the all-in, like, this could have been a situation where Solar may have had a huge lead this game, but... Instead, uh, they're both going to be pretty even for the next minute or so. Muta's on the top side, not going to be able to pick off that Widow Mine, but they're going to fly right on by and look for some harass. This Deepa in the middle of nowhere is going to be great at seeing this coming, but Jokshi doesn't turn around. He's just going to resolve to lose the SCVs, and I guess this, you know what? <laughs> One good all-in deserves another, am I right, boys? Who needs macro? I've got mules. So he's going to push towards this base, but even if he scans and sees this, this is a lot of banelings. This is going to be on creep for the most part. Mutas have shot down this third base. Now the turret comes in, but that's ambitious to say the least. Marines are actually going to take out some of the Mutas, which is a nice trade here for Jokshi. But on the left side, looks like Ling's Banes and Widow Mines all traded out very awkwardly. And Solar's left with still 30 more supply. And I'm talking army supply, not overall supply, obviously. But that being said... Uh, SCV is still dying. Third base not mining. Jokshi finding it hard to replace the troops that he's losing. 
and he might just be out of the tournament at this point, guys. It's a little too early to say death, but it's not looking good. Solar's going to have to make some massive mistakes to lose a game like this to Jokshi. Especially plus two, Carapace finishing up. Uh, whoa, a bit of a mini sub train there. Thank you very much to Lex, Lex, or Les, yes, for the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you very much to D. Gilliarek for the Twitch Prime sub. Sorry if I said that name wrong. Foonly hit us up with a 26 month straight up resub in a row. And of course, Stream Grill for the Twitch Prime sub as well. Hey, girl, you, you single? How you doing? Oh, yeah, what's up? Thank you so much for those subs, guys. 2-2 uh, two, two, finishing up for Jock. She might even give him a bit of a lead. It's questionable. It's, it's still down in supply by such a large margin. But uh, he'll have two weapons. Solar will be lacking on this a little bit. Not sure if on purpose or by accident. Because his armor did finish up. Oh, well. Solar's still got a lot of units to fight with. I don't think this will be too problematic for him. I do like the Infestation Pit leading towards Hive. I think he's dragging this on a little bit more than he needs to, per se. But, uh... No, the Mutas are going to get caught if they move. Fall back, boys! Uh, quick side note. Oh, man, what are these subs coming? Late game! Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. We're kind of getting to that point. I'd say, like, 13 minutes is more of the late game. But you know what? We're almost there. So, in honor of your sub, I'll call this the late game. But uh, Bailey's looking to roll in off of Creep. It's not going to be good against a player who's already split, but he finds the hits anyways, and Joshi loses a large portion of his Marines. Solar loses a lot of Banelings, but let's be honest, guys. Solar is maxed out immediately upon losing these units. He has no problems replacing these. Mutus trying to give chase to the Medivacs. A little bit scary. They take some pepper from the Marines. Wrap around the right side with those Lings and Banes. He's off of Creep. Joshi's beaten to a corner. Focus Fire's actually looking so good. Solar runs for the hills. Ling's trying to cut off the reinforcements at this point, but this is maybe not the engagement he wants to take. Either way, freeing up supply for that eventual hive deck. 58 more Ling's on the way and 10 Banelings morphing in. I don't think Solar's feeling too bad about his position right now. Ah, uh, the mute is... You know, he didn't even go lots. If you guys have been watching Rogue during the IEM qualifiers and a couple other Zerg players, you've been seeing him go for like 30 plus mutas, but... Solar sitting on 15 is perfectly content to be on that number. Uh, once again, overextending off a of creep, realizing it, he starts falling back. More banelings being made. This actually is a little bit worrisome. A bit of a bluffing game as the new banelings come on in. Jokshi's got a lot of marines. His solar starting to lose out on that supply lead that he had going for him. I mean, overall, still nailing it, but that army supply was so dependent on banelings. Now the marines are starting to go down. Muto's coming to pick off those medivacs. No more healing for you. No healing for you. And these Marines are sadly just going to die off of the creep. That's going to be game. GG's get gold and Solar will take the 2-0. And send us on to the Grand Finals. Where we will, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your point of view, have a ZVZ. So, uh, it's going to be a best of five. There's quite a bit of money on the line for this. We've raised up to $342. Thank you very much to Laser SEQ for that $10. Says, thanks for all the great content. Here's a little additional for the prize pool. That's awesome to see, guys. Um, but we're going to go to a break. Before I do, speaking of that prize pool, I do want to talk about the fundraiser we have going. This is going to get boring and annoying so quick because we're going to be advertising it for... The, well, frankly, until we fill out the goal up, we're aiming for $30,000. I know it's crazy and it's ambitious, but we want to make the biggest, best tournament we can. Focus on foreigners versus Koreans. Learn more about it by typing exclamation mark mega in chat. Two days in, we're already at $1,500. It's off to a fantastic start. Big thanks to Partouf once again for his huge contribution tonight. But, uh... We are going to go to a commercial break. I'm going to talk to Golden about the news, and we'll see you guys in a few minutes. I'll tell you guys the good news when we return.